I am not a hairstylist. I am not a groomer. <laughs> I work with shears all the time, but I'm a sharpener. I'm Bonnie McGowan, Benika Shears. I have lots and lots and lots of videos on sharpening and on shears and all things that cut. And uh, I went to the Atlanta Pet Fair because I wanted to know more about the dog grooming shears. And I met an expert on it, He's, and I'll be glad to share that with you. Closer there. All right. We can get close together. There we go. My wife knows I, you're with me, so, so we're okay. Yeah, yeah, so me too. Yeah. Well, Gene right. doesn't know who I'm with. He thinks I'm with Joe Collar Dorsey. So. Let's see if this is. Oh, are we recording? Nope. Oh, yes, we are. It's real. Oh, there it is. I okay. must have pushed the button and didn't know it. So. I think it is. Let's see. Is it, so we're all talking about our husbands. Is the timer yeah, going no, on? I see the little red blinking down. Yeah, there. I just don't see the timer advancing. It just says zero zero zero. See right there beside the red button. No, oh, next no, to no, it. No, okay, it's we got Okay, here we go. Yeah, we can put this in a blooper thing. <laughs> hey, I am at the Atlanta Pet Show, and this is the first show I've gone to since the pandemic hit, and the last one I went to before the pandemic was the one in Orlando. Okay, so, so it's I, been a while. It's been a while, but um, I've got Jim Warner here with me, and uh, we have been getting, and the reason I went to the last pet show, and the reason I'm here, is that we're doing more and more in sharpening for the groomers. Sure. And um, I've been, you know, 30 years shopping for the hair salons and I'm getting more and more grooming stuff, training more people that are concentrating on groomers. Right. And you have, tell a little bit about your certification that you do sure. and your credentials and what groomers, how they're different than stylists okay. and okay. what they're using. Well, I'll turn it all over to you. Okay, Jim. perfect. That big long introduction. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well, 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 simply put, Ours, we're the International Professional Groomers, is who I'm affiliated with. And we're on, on the web, if you look up International Professional Groomers, but we certify groomers for, at the master's level, the super style, so they are doing show dog quality, or pre, what we call reprofile. Our basic certification, though, is all about safety of the dog. And some of that actually affects us as sharpeners, too, because I sharpen our shears now, as well. And, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can help the groomers be safe with okay, the dogs okay. a little bit. Things that we're looking for that sometimes sharpeners that don't know any better um, don't know if they help. Yeah. So there's yeah. things you can help, right? Now I'm going to talk a little bit about modifying some shears, and we're going to talk a little bit about clipper blades. And okay, the first, yeah, but, but the first thing yeah. I want to say is make sure before you do anything drastic that you talk to the groomer because they may not know what you're going to know now, right? But as, as an example, and this is a good place to start, okay. so we certify, like I said, they actually groom a dog as well as do paper testing to show that they can do the handling so the dog is safe, that it's not gonna get cut or have damage from the over restrain or they're not gonna get water in their ears or anything like yeah. that. So it's very hands-on certification. Um, but one of the things that you would probably not ever want to do with a pair of stylus shears is this because you'd be bloody, because there's come to a sharp point. Most of the time, groomers, most groomers, want a rounded edge. Well, they'll be pointy, but not scratchy. Yeah, yeah. Th these aren't, these aren't, so I, I, those I aren't not, even I pointy not at all. I might like this, but I might do yeah, scratchy. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but they, but they the definitely need, like to they okay. need to be rounded. They need to be rounded. Okay. And, and, and what happens is, as they get sharpened, we take that, that, you know, most of the grooming shears, now there are some shears that are sold as grooming shears that they make and then they just sell them to whoever will buy them, right? Some of the brands show up at both shows without the same shears, so they some tend to be a little pointy. But as we sharpen, since we're taking metal off the inside of the edge, we will create them pointier yeah. the more we sharpen them. So there comes a point, <laughs> whereas sharpening, you need to think about rounding those off no a little bit. Intended. No pun intended. Well, a little pun intended, right? <laughs> And the same's true with clipper blades. You know, when we're sharpening clipper blades, there comes a, a, a time when you have to be real careful because they can scratch as they run them tight against the skin. I cut myself yeah. more on doing clipper blades right. than I do shears. Yes. Yeah. So we need to be alert to that to make sure there isn't any scratching there. Um, whether it, I know there's different ways of handling that, and I'm not the super clipper blade sharpener. I'm still kind of a newbie at that myself, um, working at that. But you need to make sure that they're not scratching. And we learned on the ones that are cutting cats, even right. more so. Even more so, absolutely, because their, their skin, you could actually literally tear it 
if you hook one besides cutting it. It's very thin. Matter of fact, this is probably a good thing for, for sharpeners to think about. I don't know that it'll really affect it, but the thicker the dog or cat fur, the thinner their skin is because they've got all, yes. We would think it's opposite. So I'll mention, yeah. I'll mention non-pet animals. Elephants have really thick skin and they just have just very few hairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thicker the skin, you know, you, when like the huskies have mass, husky dogs, yeah. massive amounts of hair, right? Very thick undercoat. Their skin is much thinner than a short hair dog would be oh, because okay. it has less protection. Okay. Well, that, yeah. So what that means to you then as a sharpener is that, you know, asking what kind of dogs you do, they need to have the, the thicker the fur, you need to have sharper tools. They need to be very sharp but you need to watch the points and the ability to scratch with those clipper blades because the clipper blades, it's very easy to scratch a dog with those if they've been over-pointed by over-sharpening. Okay. Okay? Now, so that, that's kind of directly affecting our sharpeners. The, yeah. the other thing is that um, it's good to ask the groomers what they do with these. You know, I'm holding curb shears here. Um, they've been in the grooming business for a long time. Lots of people use those around the feet or around the heads, um, sometimes on the body, but it's mostly feet and heads. With feet, they can catch nails. So some, I know a lot of the groomers that I work with, they've got a pair of curves that they use on the feet, and then they've got a couple pairs that they use every place else on the body. Catching the nail is if you've got a real acute edge, so that'd be a higher degree edge, mm -hmm. the way that we talk about it here in the States, right? That's a very sharp edge. It's more likely to put a nick in. Yeah. Right. So if they have, doesn't hurt. Ask them what do you use these for. If they say, well, those are my favorite, you know, shears to do feet. Or you'd feet. want you'd want more likely to put, if not a bevel edge, even a steeper convex edge, depending on the kind Blunters, of shear. So it's a Blunters. Stronger edge, okay. A stronger edge, so it doesn't nick on the nails as fast. Right. And they'll okay. like they'll like you better. Right. Finishing shears need to be very now, sharp. The foot ones are they yeah. usually shorter? Usually the shorter shears and okay. usually curves. Not okay. always. Shorter Some people curve, use okay. longer curves, right? In theory, a groomer should be using a curve proportionate to the size of the body part they're working on. Okay. So there are some longer curves, and people use those if they want to cut a poodle this way to get the big poodle rounded shape. Otherwise, they use straight shears going this way. So there's okay. more than one way to use, a lot of show people don't even bother with sears curves because they're so good with their straights they can make it cut a curve. But the average groomer that's kind of, I'll say, productive doing pet grooming will lots of times use curves because it helps you give it that part. And that's cut. why they have so many shears. That's why they have so many I mean, shears. As a sharpener, yeah. I'm like, well, my stylist has like four pairs right. and you've got a whole box. Right. <laughs> well, and some of that is that a lot of groomers haven't been really highly educated in what they want, so they buy a lot of different shears looking for their golden shear, and I don't yeah. mean the color. But the other thing that groomers run into, and you'll see this sharpening, is you really want to look for those nicks because sometimes you've got to take a lot of metal off to get through the nick. It's not, they may even sh cut, you do test, they'll cut fine, except there's that nick. Yeah. Because unlike people in a, in a stylist chair, the dogs will kick the shear, they set them down, they'll kick them off, and they hit on the hard surface. And even worse, they'll, they'll fall and land with the shear halfway open, yeah. and they'll put a big nick in there. So that's one of the reasons that groomers have to have them. They can't say, oh, it's getting dull, so I know I need to sharpen it, because they could have a perfectly good sharpening at 8.30 in the morning, and at 8.45, it's done for the day or for the week. Because it, all it takes is that one drop so or that have one. They have a lot of backup shears. They have to have lots of backup okay, shears. That makes sense. That makes that, sense. That can make sense? Yeah. 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 And, di <laughs> and, and, and different styles and different lengths, you know. Um, there's different types of thinners, as you know, different amounts of tooths, mm -hmm. tooths, different number of teeth per inch, and the chunkers or blenders, depending on what you call them, and um, straights, long straights, curves, short curves, right? There are even some people that make curves that go the other direction. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not, they're, they're too new for me. I'm, I'm, I'm old school, <laughs> but they're coming that way. So it's easy for a groomer to build up a lot, of, a lot of shears. So if you get a grooming client and you create them as a loyal client, they may not get things sharpened a lot because they, a lot of groomers don't know to keep their shears super sharp, but 
lots of times they will hand you that bag of shears yeah, because they've no got way. okay the drawer is full of dull ones now would you please sharpen them all and that can that can be kind of a thing but and then and i find um because uh, recently um carrie serta we've got a video with her and she's learned to sharpen her own things and she said now i understand how we overwhelmed our sharpener Mm -hmm. By giving him, we thought we were helping him out by him not having to come as often by giving him this many. <laughs> but she says we were overwhelming him and he couldn't do his best work. Right. Well, because so he's, he's be used to off. yeah, he's used to showing up at a salon and getting four or five pairs of shears. Yeah. And he shows up at a grooming salon. They say here's fifty, and you've got an hour. You know. Yeah. And, and they'd yeah. probably be better off, you know, giving him, you know, absolutely four to eight or yep. something like that, yep. rather than a whole. That's easy. You know, yeah, yeah. That's easier. That's easier. Right. And they'll probably get better sharpening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and and so since we're talking about, I think how, I think we're talking about how sh groom how sharpeners can help groomers. Mm -hmm. Most groomers don't haven't had a lot of education in taking care of their equipment. So teaching them to keep their shears clean, to oil them regularly, Did to make they sure they're school, dry. Just like the cosmetologist, well, they, or they learn on the job. Both. There are some very good grooming schools, and there's a lot of self-taught groomers or taught by working someplace groomers, and there's even people that just start. There are very few areas in the in the in the United States that have any legal requirements. You have the business you have to have your business license, but they're not licensed. That's now, what Santa, I um, El Paso, Texas, just recently makes anybody grooming be certified, and so and we suspect that you know as the government becomes more involved that that's going to happen but right now so they don't know that so you'll do your clients a big favor by saying wash your clipper blades and oil them because a lot of them don't even know how to how to oil their clipper blades no, they don't. and so that can cr increase customer loyalty and make them last or longer the screw on their shears. or just the screw on the shears particularly now the screw ones and are you, you can teach them how to adjust that real easily Right. If you're going to do groomers, you must have a box of UFO tools <laughs> because they got that with their shears. They don't know where it is. They may have even awesome. thrown it away. They yeah. didn't know what it was for. So, yeah. so um, have, having a having order some or get a hold of money. Order <laughs> yeah. spares. Yeah. yeah, order order spares. Right. Um, because that they and for me now I do things a little differently. Um, Whenever I give shears back to a groomer, I give them a sample of oil. Mm -hmm. It's a little perfume sample and a little cloth to wipe their shears with. And um, if it's a UFO shear, I can, you know, I buy UFO tools by the pound. I always put the UFO tool back in because I give them a note about how to tighten their shears. Because they you... won't find that. They won't know where it is. So then they can't, then they complain because their shears are too loose or too tight after they use them the first few weeks. Some of the groomers I sharpen for, yes. they tell me they they like their shears looser than what a typical stylist does. Can you address that? Yes. Stylists, and this is simplistic for stylists that are watching, but stylists cut. Groomers, we tell them to cut an area, cut a plane. So they start their shears when they're doing finish work in particular. They start before they get to the air, they move across that plane, and then they pull away and stop. Otherwise, you get little divots. Because they're doing that hair not between their fingers, most of the time it's brushed up. Okay. So they're trying to create that smooth look in a natural position. Now when they're doing feet and, and, and you know, bottoms of ears and things like that, the trim is different than the finish work. Because trimming there was That's cut. similar to what I'm seeing in the African American barbershops. Well it's the same thing because they're cutting they're hair doing... that's not, they're cutting hair that's not in hand. Mm -hmm. The hair is there and if you, if we, if you hunt and peck you end up with you had a bump, now you have a hole. Yeah. So now everything else became a bump. So, so they like that for that finish work to be able to. So they move they the like hands. it a little bit. Looser. They like it a little looser, okay. which means they've got to have a, a a fairly acute blade, mm -hmm. unless they are working on feet and ears, or unless they cut dirty dogs. Now that's one of the other things that a lot yeah, of and a I've, lot of. I've had them say, "Hey, this is my dirty dog shears." Right. This is my and a lot of I think a lot of sharpeners don't realize they think that everybody cuts clean. Yeah. air on dogs and they don't a lot of people will do what they call a rough out and they'll or they'll do a lot of it um particularly if it's if it's a, a very dirty lot of hair dog because then they think it's faster to wash if they if they get rid of a lot of that yeah. hair, wash and dry and it and it and part of that's a technique thing it really isn't in the long run because now you've got to cut twice so 
it may be faster to wash, but you took the, you have to subtract the cutting time, you know, but, but they may be doing that. And that's particularly true for those of us that sharpen clipper blades. A lot of people will clip dirty dogs. So be aware of the fact that if they're doing that, they can dull a blade very quickly. All it takes is a little sand in, in some feet and you could have done a beautiful job. So um, it's, I think we should all guarantee our work, but there comes a point where you need to be very alert to the fact that some people clipping dirty dogs, you'll be going back time after time because you can ruin a pair of clipper blades in one dog if they've got a lot of dirt and sand and they haven't brushed it out first. Yeah, I see that in the large animal um, blades. Yep, in, yep, you know. exact same thing in, in the dog industry. And part of that depends on where you are. You're here in Georgia. Yeah. I'm in Oregon in the western half and we have sand in the dirt, but not like in central Oregon or in southern California, Arizona. Some places where they come in with, you know, that there's just, there's so much grit there, it'll go through scissors and, and blades much quicker than normal. So you kind of have to adjust your your sharpening to fit what it is the groomer does. So I think talking to them because some people like a blunt bevel and some people like a really sharp edge because they're doing more finish style grooming or breed profile grooming or what I'll say the words we use is they're trying to make the pets look like a star rather than just removing a lot of hair. And yeah. some of that's some of that's customer oriented. Some of it's some of it's the groomer's philosophy oriented, but. You don't want to put a dull edge on some good shears. There's some groomers out there that have very expensive shears. Then the next groomer will complain because you put too sharp of an edge on it. So I think communication is even more important than with the beauty industry. And that's hard to do when they just give you a box a of shears. A box of shears, shears. exactly, yeah. 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 Or yeah. their mail order. You know? Or mail order, either one. If you're doing mail order, I suggest, you know, call them or put some questions on your form. Number your shears and tell me what you use it for. I mean, that sounds like that'd be a lot of work. I do that with my people and, you know, I ask them specifically and I actually have little tags I can put on each individual shear. The little, I, I won't mention which place that only charges a dollar for everything and has a green sign because <laughs> I can't mention their brand name, but they sell like 50 of those for a dollar. So yeah, they're just like yeah. a penny or two. And it's a little white tag, kind of like a key tag. And I will label if they say, this is my, if I'm going to take them, you know, any place other than just write, to do right then if I'm taking them back home or if like here yeah. at, a shop, at a show if they give them to me I want to mail them back and I'll label this is for beat this is their finish this person does poodles they give me an eight inch or ten inch shear and they're for poodles I know they want that to be razor sharp okay. as compared to somebody with some short ones they're going to use around feet they want that tough edge not necessarily super sharp edge so just talk to the groomers because grooming industry is so broad and their education is very broad that you don't know just because they say they're a groomer you don't know where they are in the type of dogs they do or where they are in the training that they've had yeah you, you were talking today when we were in there about the we saw some what was it three for 99 dollars three shares. for 99 dollar shares yeah 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 <laughs> they don't know better right yeah and they think that that's a deal and but then they're also it's funny I, talking, they're the ones that have the carpal tunnel syndrome yeah. problems because yeah. they have to crank on those shears because they're dull so quick. So those three for ninety-nine dollar shears might be very expensive shears. If they very expensive in the long run. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's also why they have hundreds of shears because they buy three for ninety-nine dollar shears every four to six months when they go to a show instead of having some more expensive shears sharpened for less in the long yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate Jim. Um, that was really informative, and um, I'm going to get. Let you get back to okay. food. Well, thanks, Bonnie, and, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Bye. Now, wasn't that interesting? I learned a lot that I didn't know. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel because we're going to be on this adventure together in knowing more about sharpening and shears and all things that cut. So, learn along with me, come back and teach me some things, and hopefully, you'll learn a few things from me.